Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, the Collector Mania LCG pack reviews. This time we're doing Arkham Horror, and I have my buddy Tyler here, and we're going to talk through the cards in the uh, Blood on the Altar pack that just came out for the Dunwich Horror Cycle, so introduce yourself, Tyler. Uh, hello, I'm Tyler. Um, I've been uh, doing card games for pretty much all my life. I started Magic um, in the early 90s, a little after it came out, and been doing that off and on. And uh, Kyle here said I should try out the Arkham Horror, so uh, I'm... Bought a few few uh, few intro packs and uh, played a few games, and now I am the expert. <laughs> well, in this game. Uh, Tyler's one of uh, Tyler plays Elder Tor with me all the time. We've played like Elder Signs, so this is all set in the same universe for people who don't know. And Arkham Horror is kind of the like living card game version where each deck represents a person or the character, and you kind of level up your deck. So what we're gonna be talking about today are the prepare. Or I'm sorry. Are the uh, character cards from the new the new the new set, not the encounter cards? So uh, we're just going to dive right into it. Um, the the first card in this pack is prepared for the worst. Uh, it says it's a one cost event that's got a lore and a. Again, I'm gonna, we should probably learn the icon symbols and not just call them what we call them. So we call them yeah. book and fist, but uh, lore and strength, I believe. Um, it's a tactic subtype, and it says search the top nine cards of your deck for a weapon asset and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. So like. I saw this and I was like, this is so cool because it doesn't cost any experience. So you can just throw it in right off the bat, right? And you can use it to make one of these like decks, deck archetypes they're pulling out, which is like all of the weapons. Because they just did the bandolier card, right? right? Which lets you get an additional slot. So I'm just like thinking of like a shotgun and a machete. And then there's like lightning gun coming out. So I was like, oh my god, you could build a crazy deck. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I like the searcher cards. I have not played very much um, Protector, right? That's yeah, we've been kind of set in our deck yeah, types for a while. Yeah, we've been doing a campaign, so. so we've just been running one thing. But I haven't played much Protector, but um, in my Psychic deck, I do have the uh, Arcane Acolyte, I believe, mm -hmm. which is the one that lets you search, search the top spell. three, yeah. and um, I love that, because when your deck is focused on weapons or uh, psychic damage cards yeah. and spell cards, uh, and you don't have them. Yeah, you it's too legit. You need to find them. Yeah, and the the tutor effect here of her nine cards is a lot better than some of the other ones we see. So, um, and at no experience and one cost, like turn one, you can play this as your first action and be ready to just deal with whatever's there. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the beginning stuff is set up, and so being able to set up is actually nice instead of just being like. Uh, I gotta draw. Oh my god! I can't get anything I need. So I agree. I think that one's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a kicker for like a good rolling deck to try to get his guns out or something like that. So. Yeah, definitely. And it's nice because it's a no experience, um, no level to it, right? So you can throw it in any other deck really easily. So if you do have a lot of weapons in like a scavenger deck or maybe um, a rogue deck, you can then pull it out, like pull out like knives or any yeah. other thing else. So uh, the next card we have is the first in a series of cards in this set. That's called uh, Keen Eye. It's a talent. So there's a bunch of talent cards in this set. Um, they don't cost anything, but they have the permanent subtype. So the permanent subtype cards, stay, so you start the game with them. So this will be a game that's the card that's out in your play area when you start the game. It's got th it's cost three experience as all of these these uh, talent type cards do. Um, did I say the name of it? It's Keen Eye. You can yeah, see it's yeah. Keen Eye. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> they're all kind of different and special too. So each each faction has something they leverage in the game, and these talent cards take advantage of those things. So the, 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 this one is the most, what I'd call like boring one, but it's, the, it's not bad. Like, um, it says, as a quick action, you can either spend two resources to get one a book or a lore until the end of the phase, or you can spend two resources to get one fist in the end of the phase. And so, to me, these are the two stats that a protector needs, like at least book, right? Uh, well. Because it's gonna help you investigate. Yeah, book is, book is always good. Uh, like permanents are always good. I love that keyword. The only permanent I have now is indebted, so I want to see some good permanents that aren't weaknesses yeah. that I have to start the game with. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely love permanents. Uh, book is always good. Um, I find that when I'm running a low lore character and it, the, the, the mission is to get clues, well, you're, just you're stuck. Do nothing. You yeah, can't you, do you do nothing. Um, <laughs> you just get destroyed during the mythos phase, and that's basically your existence in life. Um, so, 
having the ability to get an extra book there is good. Um, if you're a protector, fighting is definitely good. And two resources for one book is not as good as things like physical training, but it starts. you start with the game with it, and you don't have to pay for it. So physical training costs two, but it's a one cost to increase your um, your yeah. feet or your strength. Yeah, and that's like the only criticism I have about the card is resources. It costs a lot, too, mm -hmm. is a lot. You can do it repeatedly, right, I believe? Oh, yeah, like quick actions. You can just you could spend four to get two book or four to get one book and one strength. Yeah, yeah. but that that to me is it's a, a, little, little, a little much. Yeah, I think it's like this one is a little clutch. So I was like, oh, man, maybe you could put it in something where you can get money. But it's three, three, it's level three card. So you yeah. can't have it in a lot of other decks. So I think most of the decks are from level one to two. And you could have it in like a Jenny deck or any of the new archetypes from Dunwich Horror that have that like add five cards from this faction or any other faction or whatever, right? Yeah. But no, like you can't actually because those are all level one cards. So yeah, so you can't. This is these these permanent cards are going to be specifically for the faction they're from in most cases, at least with the characters we have now. So the next one, Tyler, you you saw this one and you were like, oh, this is cool. And I was talking um, to. Oh, another player we play with that about this one the other day too, because ability to draw cards in, um, in in magic, yeah, in, in not in magic, or but in yeah, in, in anything. But the ability to draw cards as a person who's a um, what is it, the researcher? The, the the orange card type is like really good. Like it it saves you all the time. And so this card is called. You want to you want to read it? Oh yeah, this card is preposterous sketches. Um, it's a two cost and. You play only if there's a clue at your location, and then draw three cards. Now, I, I just opened this pack, like literally five minutes ago, <laughs> and as I was going through these, uh, the first thing I said was, oh, that's a great card, because like Kyle just said, drawing is uh, great, and two cost is perfectly affordable. Um, like. 90% of locations are going to have clues on them. Mm -hmm. And so this is just like immediately, like if you're running low on resources, just, you know. Especially for the decks that are based around these two archetypes now. So uh, Daisy needs to get books. She needs to get her books out. She wants to get encyclopedia. She wants to get a old medical text and she wants to get old book of lore. Yeah. And those three are going to be the ones that like kind of make that deck hum a little bit because you can tutor, you can you can heal and you can actually like buff tests and those are the three good ones and she's get that extra book action so getting your books out and play is going to be good for you uh, getting uh, fodder or chuds for skill tests is good too oh, yeah. getting three cards that you might get a skill test thing for going to be great and the rex decks right now rex has a pretty solid um, he's got his bad curse but he's a pretty solid character like Getting three cards from Rex is really good, and Rex is all about drawing. So it, it might be a little superfluous in Rex, but it's still value because you're drawing. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it plays really well into the next card, which is the second of the five um, talents, Higher Education. It's a, it's, a, it's a permanent, so it doesn't have a cost. It's a level three asset. It's a talent subtype, and it says, when you have five or more cards in your hand, Higher Education gains the quick, uh, quick actions for spend a resource to gain two uh, willpower for this test, or brain as we call it, um, and you can spend a quick action and spend one resource to get two lore book for the skill test. So this one's not interesting because again, so you'll notice that all of the all five of these talents have something different. Um, this one is like a trigger, a turn on, right? Mm -hmm. So you start the game with five cards, but as you start playing, you lose them. But the whole idea for these uh, the researcher subtype I can, again, I can't remember, seeker, seeker, that's what it is, yeah. is to get cards in your hand and to f help facilitate like the flow of the game. And the ability to then, once you have that, hit that mark, to be between five and eight cards and be able to get two brain or two book is going to be helpful. Because one of the things I think one of our can one of our campaign members dies from a lot is stupid mythos willpower tests because they can't willpower hard enough. Yeah. And one resource for two willpower when you have five cards in your hand, which we always do, is is it, yeah would be really great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that this one because, I mean. The brain in the book is definitely worth it, mm -hmm. but you know there are times when you're spending like the entire game with like one card in your hand, or yeah, I, I think. But it's in, I think it's a seeker thing because I don't know if our our seeker player has ever not had five cards. Okay, so yeah, just like sitting there and like the draw once a turn thing, right? And the ability to just search and drawing as an action. I think you could play into it, but you're right. Like. 
the other characters we have, like a like a like a protector. Yeah, you could have the, another protector deck, but yeah, like, right now. But yeah, but like a psychic deck. You know, I there's like tons of times where I have less than five cards. Oh, there is a more dangerous version for your deck. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll get to that. Oh yeah, we will. Okay, so. Uh, Lo Lone Wolf is the next card. It's a it's our first rogue. I think they're called rogues. I hope they're called rogues because that's what I'm calling them. No, they're rogues. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is a uh, whoops. I put the wrong one up there. It's like why didn't I? I didn't. I don't think we're on streetwise yet. So Lone Wolf is a, a one cost asset with a, a agility icon on it. It's limit one per investigator, and it's a reaction ability that says when your turn begins, if there are no other investigators at your location, gain a resource. So it turns anybody into Jenny Barnes uh, if they're alone. Yeah. Uh, kind of like you don't get the resources in the resource phase, but you do get the resources at the start of your turn yeah. Which is kind of better sometimes which you can surpass stupid mythos effects. Yeah, which is definitely great for Some of these super high cost ones. I thought I saw one. Oh, there aren't any in this pack, but, uh, <laughs> There are high cost cards. There are high cost game. cards like uh, <coughs> a Gamble one that just gives you. Oh, yeah, resources. sure gamble. It's like but, three for ten. Yeah, yeah, but uh what I don't like about this card, it, it plays it plays the lone investigator wandering around. It helps that a lot, but it's just so dangerous. It, yeah, it's it's dangerous in our campaign. Whenever someone like uh, goes off by themselves, so we can maximize our clue gathering, it usually turns into to just like a huge mess. Uh, they a usually myth house, either die. Comes yeah. out, there's a monster yeah. on them, and then it, it becomes. <laughs> A thing of not finding clues but saving this person. So, mm -hmm. I think in the right kind of deck, especially since it's a zero cost or zero level card, you can throw it in anywhere. You could really like kind of leverage it early on. And since it's a talent, it's easy to put it out and either not use it or forget about it. It doesn't take up a slot, right? Yeah. So that's a nice part about these talent cards is that they don't really count against your maximum limit for things. Like it's not a hand limit, it's not a spell limit. So yeah, that is. <laughs> but I agree with you. <clears throat> I read this card and I was like, I never want to be alone. Yeah. Like uh, I don't even. I mean, one resource for being alone this is like a huge gamble. Yeah, but, definitely. But like, if you're, if like that's your style and you built a deck for it, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the next one is the uh, rogue version of the talent that we're talking about. So this one is a. Uh, again, no cost because it's a permanent. It's a three level three asset called Streetwise. It says, as a quick action, you can spend two resources to either get three uh, lore or book or three feet for this skill test. So, I mean, as far as just straight up value goes, I think this one is the best one. It requires two to do, but it gives you uh, three in the end. Okay. It's definitely a a, a, ro a rogue only. Like you can tell it's for rogues only because. They're gonna be the ones that'll have these resources, but uh, th unlike the um, unlike the other one, this one is just for the skill test. So the keen eye is for the turn. This one is just for the skill oh, test, but it's a huge test. boost yeah, for one it's, skill test. It's a really big boost, and it's uh, it's feet. Feet. Yeah. Which, if you're a rogue <laughs> and uh, you're running, you're you're playing lone wolf, and you need to run away from a monster, yeah. like that's that's good. You also have your like you know kind of World of Warcraft rogue tank th thing you can do with boss monsters, where like you just give it to the person with the highest agility, and they draw a token and can only fail on negative on like the the tentacles, yeah. and then they just exhaust it, and everybody takes turns like Shaun of the Dead beating the the <laughs> boss. So like they just can sit there and like. Oh, it's exhausted. Let's murder it, and then, like everybody stabs it, and it readies, and it's like, what happened? And then it happens again. So, I like that the feet getting three feet is like enough to put Jenny, the deck I have right now, in this position where you can barely never run away. Yeah, which makes me happy, and she's always got money. So, I think this talent is money. If yeah, you will. I I definitely like that one more than higher education. Yeah. So the next card, I, I'm actually this one's kind of interesting to me. It's called Defiance. It's a skill card, so it doesn't have any cost. Um, it's a zero level skill card, and it's got a um, like kind of like a wild icon, or I don't know what that symbol is called, but it's a wild. It's the wild. It's the one where you can commit it to any skill test, and it gives plus one. Uh, before revealing chaos tokens for this test, choose one of the following symbols, and they're the the skull, the cultist head, the broken tombstone or rune, and the um, star of spawn or Cthulhu thing. Squig. 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 Squiggly squid. Uh, ignore the effects of the chosen symbol during this test, including its modifiers. So. <laughs> the, the, this is one of the flavor text ones I like. It just says no. And it's like some dude who's just like, you know, against the darkness, as you can see, because you're watching this YouTube video. But, uh, I mean, I haven't played enough, so you play the, you play this color a lot. And, I, I mean, it's, to me, these, like, these, um, what are they called? Mystic skill cards are always, like, 
really good, like remove a horror, or you know, like like fearless is like remove a horror. This one's like just ignore the effect of one of these tokens if you can call it, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But the thing I don't like about this one, and it's probably just me and my horrible luck, is that you would call these things and they would never, ever, ever come up. But it's nice though, because you can block one off. Like you can be like, look, I know that if I get the tentacles, I'm losing. So like, I'm gonna do tentacles for this defined skill test. It gives you one in that skill test and you're like, at least I'm not getting tentacles. So that you know we're always talking about like, uh, you can only fail if X, and <laughs> yeah. this makes it yeah. X minus one or whatever, right? Like I can only fail if I get the minus four, the tentacle, or the, the, the elder sign, or the, the tentacle, the, the bad tentacle, the auto fail. You yeah. can take out one of them, right? Yeah. But it, it does seem really conditional though. Yeah, and I, I feel like the these these the icon ones, their effects usually aren't like that terrible that like getting them just destroys you. Especially when you're playing Daisy, because like you almost want to grab a horror every time you cast, because it deals extra damage. Right? And so uh, if you yeah. ignored one of the effects, you wouldn't get the horror, you wouldn't get the modifier, you, you would blah blah blah, right? Yeah, so, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. This one is probably my favorite card in the set just thematically. Um, because I love what it does. And we play again, we play lots of Eldritch Horror, so like when you get a uh, a, a like a D blood pact or the demon pact in Ar El Toro, you're like always take life dead or whatever the the one that like you can kill everybody oh, with. Oh yeah, you, the, you always like pact. you usually yeah. you take it because it's fun. <laughs> but this card is called Blood Pact. It's again it's this it's the uh, Mystic Permanent. And this one's not a talent. It's actually a spell pact subtype. And it says as a quick action, you can add one Doom to Blood Pact to get plus three willpower. For this skill test, limit once per test. So the other ones you can you could pay two four resources to get plus six for the test or whatever. But yeah. uh, and this one is add and then you, or you can add fists. So you can give yourself strength or give yourself willpower. Limit once per test. I kind of like the idea of playing with fire, but it's kind of scary too. Yeah, Th see that's the thing with this one is I don't I don't like playing with the doom too much. Um, yeah. When I have arcane initiate, which comes out with the doom. And I'm always uh, hesitant to put that out. Oh yeah, I, I too. When I first saw that too, I was like, this is I would never do this. Yeah. Like this one though, I feel like you could leverage a little bit more, especially if you you know you're getting the choice to control it, which is really nice because you it's not like it, I mean, it's kind of like arcane and shit and that idea, but to me, like being able to say like we can handle one doom for you to automatically pass this test could yeah. be something that would be really good. And plus the plus three is like. It's pretty clinching. Yeah, like mm -hmm. this is definitely something that's like you have on the side, and then ready it's to like, go. I definitely <laughs> need to pass this test. I can. Like, we can do a doom here. We have to do a doom. I think they need, mystics need some like doom clearing stuff or some stuff like that because there's a lot of there's a decent amount of cards that want to add doom that you can't really handle yet because doom's really tight in this game. Yeah, it's like your timer, so it's just weird to have to. Like, yeah, <laughs> to, to, to mitigate to, that. To mess with the Doom and stuff, so. Yeah. So the, uh, the next one is also, this is one of my, like, favorite mechanical parts in the set. It's called Rise of the Occasion. Mainly because it has three mysteries, and it costs zero XP to get. So you can throw this in any deck that can have rogue cards, and just get a card that gives you three, plus three on any test that you want, right? And because it's a skill card, it's giving you the benefit of the card in the test, which is... Uh, it's an innate ability. It says, commit to a skill test you're performing only at the difficulty that test is at least two higher than your base skill value. So, like, hmm. it, it's specifically built for doing things that are hard, right? And the skill cards that do that are... Something like this is going to happen a decent oh, amount. Yeah, like, yeah. You're never going to be always prepared for every skill test in the game. And this is, like, it gets good for fighting. It doesn't say limit one skill per test. So you can do this alongside of, like, a shotgun blast hmm. and try to, like, you know, get it higher. Because the shotgun yeah. blast wants you to have two or higher or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I think this one's kind of cool, it, and it fits with the whole survivor um, archetype. Yeah, it's just like I actually <laughs> think I like this more than um, Unexpected Courage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Even though you have, because it, it's it's more oomph for the thing you need it for. Yeah, and like uh, usually Unexpected Courage is two of anything, and usually you're going to be um, just using that on something that's like way, way out of your league anyway, mm -hmm. so like this is just... Might as well bump it up. Probably, a, yeah, just a straight upgrade to that. Uh, the last one, or one of the second last one we have is the Scrapper card, which is the um, the talent for the uh, 
Rogue, uh, the uh, survivors. So this one's kind of a straight up money. Like yeah, it's the the three level three permanent. You can spend one resource to get either a fist or an agility. Yeah, and so. And it's it's just for the skill test, unlike the keen eye. I'm liking keen eye more and more as I keep reading through these because the whole phase is pretty cool, even if it's two resources. But um, yeah, I mean, this is just a. It's kind of making it the whole scrapper faction just more widely, or the survivor faction more widely survivable. Because yeah, I can't remember this the original scrapper card that lets you buff yourself, but um, or if there even is one actually, but. This one it adds to that because I don't think it's these two symbols. So maybe they cover all bases now. I don't remember. I don't play Scrapper at all, or I don't play Survivor at all. Yeah. I don't think we have anybody that plays Survivor yet, but there. Cause some, I've seen someone play it, and there's some pretty cool stuff. But it's a pretty solid card. Uh, yeah. It does cost three experience though, so you got to get there. But starting the game with it, still, still good. Um, the last one is probably like the like the coolest card that I didn't think they were going to come out with. Uh, an upgrade to Emergency Cash, which Cost to experience, so it's an emergency cash and supply, and you gain three resources and draw a card. So the original emergency cash, if you just started or don't use it or whatever, is three resources. Just gain three resources. This one's nice because it replaces itself and gives you three resources. So yeah. if you need to do things like higher education or care about how many cards in your hand, this one is just it's like a cantrip. Yeah, magic, this, is, right? this is a great card. Emergency cash in general is awesome, mm -hmm. but this one is like a draw and three resources and it's only two XP. Yeah. Which is like there's very manageable. Nothing bad about that. Mm hmm So like I love this card. I think it was so it's, cool that they upgraded it. Oh yeah, it's going into my deck. I wasn't expecting so. it to because I saw I saw at the end and I was like, oh maybe there was like a maybe there was a, a an errata or something. Yeah, no, and you're like <laughs> that's what I was like too. I was like did they just give you extra emergency cash? <laughs> they knew you left a lot. Yeah. But yeah, then you see the pips and you're like, so. That was our review of, uh, you know, the Blood on the Altar pack. Um, if you guys have any comments or, you know, want to tell us how bad we are at Arkham Horror because we don't remember the names of the symbols and stuff, please leave comments for us. Um, come down on Tuesdays to Collector Mania for Living Card Game Night, and we have also one on Saturdays, so if you guys are interested in Living Card Games, come play. Um, we don't have any events for Arkham Horror or anything like that. I think we're looking to doing some stuff, but, you know, come join us for everything else. So, see you guys next time when we do pack reviews. See ya.